There we go. Um, so we are both live streaming and recording. So, hi, for, I believe everyone knows me, but in case there's someone out in Zoom land or Facebook land or wherever land that does not know me, my name is Susan Cosden. I am the Director of Lifelong Learning at Congregation Emmanuel B'nai Yashorn. And it is my pleasure to welcome all of you to our wonderful home and Tashin baking demonstration of today. And the first person that I get to um, introduce is Jennifer Winterfield to talk about our home in Tashathan. Um, and her daughter is being a wonderful pointer. Um, that is so cool, sort of like the fish in Finding Nemo. Um, and so Jennifer's going to tell us about the Home in Tashathan. Yeah, thank you. So this event is so important um, to lifelong learning in this crazy time of COVID. Um, it's one of our fun activities that we want to raise money for our lifelong learning committee. Um, and so we just thought it was a fun activity that we can do as a community, um, as a family, as a, you know, kind of a thing to help earn, um, raise money for lifelong learning and also to make commentation to give out to the CEBJ community um, during, I think Susan will probably speak a little bit to this um, during our drive-through um, event. And we really need as many bakers as we can get. Um, right now, not that many people have signed up, including me. I just haven't signed my name, but we're planning on making commentation. Um, and we really, need people just to sign up. I know that I sent it to a couple friends and one of them said, I can't make commentation, but I'm going to go and I'm going to give money to, to support the event. So that's great too. So I just think um, so many things, great things are happening in Romamu. I know Rowan, can you tell a couple of things that you're doing in your Romamu classes that you love? Yeah, we're working on prayers, which I really like doing that, going over them and what they mean. And I love all the different challenge cards and things we're doing. They're super fun. So she's done some animation classes. She's done modern Hebrew. She's done, she's right now in Jewish folklore. I know our lifelong learning committee for adults we've done we're and doing um, some virtual trips to Israel, some lunch and learns, um, just really Susan and her team have really stepped up. So thank you to them and let's make commentation, let's give money, let's just make this a really fun and use, useful event for our community. Thank you so very much. So now um, it is my pleasure um, to introduce the woman of the hour, the person of the hour, our queen of home and Tashin, Amy! Yay, Amy! Thank you all for coming. This should be fun. Um, I just wanted you to know I, the recipe is from Jewish, well, it's adapted from Joan Nathan's cookbook, Jewish Holiday Kitchen. I'm sure some of you have it. And I may, may have made a few changes on the um, Word document that I sent out. So you can, either one is fine, but I think, um, you know, you'll do fine either way. And here is a completed tray of homotation and yours will look just like this when you're done. I am going to move them out of the way so that I don't accidentally um, spill or knock anything over before we get started. One thing I didn't put on the instructions, and I'm sure some of you already did this, is to make sure that your butter and your eggs, are, or egg, singular, is at room temperature. So the first thing we're going to do, well, the first thing you should do is preheat your oven. So my ovens are preheated to 375. Um, so you can get the, if you're doing that with me, you can get that going now. I just put um, two thirds cup of butter in the mixer with a half a cup of sugar. I'm going to get that going and cream that. And you can use a food processor for this too. I've done it both ways and it's basically, it turns out the same. 
the main thing is when you add your flour, you just don't want to over mix it. But either one, either way will work out. What happens if you over mix it? I think if you over mix anything like quick breads or even cookies, they tend to get tough. Ah. So, but something like a cake though, you have to mix a lot longer, but cookies and quick breads are, get a little tough. Nicole would, masters would be the one to really answer that question. Send all your questions to Nicole Masters. <laughs> I'm just gonna scrape it down a little bit. Mine seemed really dry when I made it last night. Is that? Really, did you use the two and a half or the three cups of flour? I figured since it said two and a half to three, I went two and three quarters. Okay, yeah, maybe next time do, you know, two and a half. Um, and then when you roll it out, you might not want to roll it in flour because you're just adding more flour. You might want to maybe roll it between, um, between wax paper or parchment paper instead of rolling it in flour. Does that make sense? Yeah, I can do that. Yeah, try that next time. But it'll it'll be fine. They might um, they might crack a little when you uh, shape them, but they'll be okay. Okay, so next I'm going to add the egg. You're trusting. I put mine in a cup in a cup so I wouldn't add oh, egg to mine. <laughs> smart. You should do that just in case you get a bad egg. Okay, and then while this is mixing, I'm going to add the teaspoon or the half a teaspoon of vanilla. And everyone should know we are recording this, so it will be going up on the online learning page with the recipe and everything, so that you can keep playing it over and over if you are like me and need to slow it down and go back and go back so that you can get it at your own pace. Just getting it down from the sides. Some, some of you may have a mix master that's a little bit better at getting it off the sides, but mine isn't that good at it. So it's just getting creamy now. Okay, so now I'm going to add the, I, I just have two and a half cups of flour, so I'm going to add that. And, and you add it all at once. Yeah, I, I didn't do. Yeah, you can add it, but I just, it works okay. Um, some recipes I do add it in stages, like the banana bread, but this one, and here's the teaspoon of baking powder. And a dash of salt. How someone much actually, is in a dash? <laughs> well, you know, that's funny that you say that someone actually gave me these little, um, and I don't know if it's a joke or not, but they're little measuring spoons and one says smidgen, pinch, and dash. And I don't know if that's a joke or not, but I use it. I, 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 have the, I have the same one. And oh, I really? use it too whenever it calls for a dash when I make my... Um, Horseradish for my gefilte fish, it calls for a dash of okay. salt to go in my jar, so I use that. So what do you think a dash is? Maybe an eighth or a sixteenth of a teaspoon? I've never measured it out against the others. I've just used okay. that same yeah. measuring thing. I'm putting this little guard on because you'll see I get flour everywhere. Whoops. I think oh. that's why I added a little at a time. <laughs> yep. I didn't have this problem yesterday. Amy, uh, yeah. if you put a towel over the bowl and yeah. the top of the mixer, it keeps it all in. Yeah, that's what this little guard was supposed to do. Here. According to- I think I just had it, I just had it on too fast. According to the actual standard of the culinary reference books, a dash is a one eighth of a teaspoon. Oh, okay. A Pinch is half of a dash, which is one sixteenth of a teaspoon. Well, it's just forming a bowl now. I don't know if you can, I mean a ball, so there. So it's, it should be in a ball any shortly. I'm just gonna scrape the sides down a little bit. Mm -hmm. 
Here, I made these yesterday. Here's my eight things. Wow. Yeah, I sort of had to make my ball because it was so dry. Yeah, but that's okay. It'll work. There, mine's just forming the ball now. Mine won't be dry because I probably lost some flour initially. Okay, so it pretty much came together. You can see it's all stuck together now. So now we'll just wrap it in some plastic wrap. What was the purpose of dividing it into four? Well, I'll show you what I did. I put it in the plastic wrap. You're, this question is coming from somebody who doesn't bake very often, like once every 10 or 15 years. <laughs> What's the question? <laughs> um, why did we divide it in four? I mean, oh, because oh, I think okay. once every 15 years or so. So, <laughs> oh, wow. It'll be easier We're to roll up. decided this. If you, if you just had one piece and you tried to roll it out, it would be a lot harder to do. Okay. A lot more cumbersome. Okay, so this is this is the dough. Okay, and then I, I sort of do what someone else said they were doing with the, you know, just use their hands to put it and get it into a ball. But I just sort of use the saran wrap or the plastic wrap to get it all, you know, in one one piece. And I sort of make a little square out of it. And it doesn't have to be perfect because you're rolling these cookies anyway, you know, tomorrow, later today or tomorrow. But if you want to do it in fourths, here I'll just take a knife and do quarters, and you can actually freeze it just like that. Or not freeze it, chill it, just like this. Okay, does everyone see that? Yeah. So there are your four pieces, and you can just take them out as you, as you feel like baking them. And I've actually baked them two days later. I haven't really tried it much longer than that. I don't know, has anyone else ever tried doing it, you know, three days later or more? Okay, so now these are going to go in the refrigerator, and I have some that are already, some pieces that are already chilled. Okay, so everyone ready to roll the, roll the home and tashin out now? Amy, I have a quick question. Sure. If you wanted to make double the recipe, would you just double everything and make all the batter together, or would you want to make two recipes separately of the bat of the um, well Ruth you did too did you double it or did you make them separately my my mixer probably wouldn't accommodate I knew it, Ruth. <laughs> yeah I doubled it you doubled yeah. It. yeah my mixer isn't that huge so I probably it, it just depends on the size of your mixer okay so here are the ones I made yesterday and I just unwrapped one a little while ago. So here's the, I roll it on a cutting board. Huh? And she rolled it up. A little flour. Maybe we should wait, it's too cold. So here's a little flour to roll it in. And I get about six, from each of these quarters, but I do have to re-roll the scraps. They say not to, to try to limit how many times you re-roll your scraps, because again, I think the cookies can get tough, but you know, otherwise, if you don't re-roll them, there's a lot of waste too. Okay, so just put it in a little flour. 
And here's my rolling pin. What I have on, you're supposed to roll these to an eighth of an inch. Um, these are actually a set of bands that you put on the end of your rolling pin. I always had trouble getting it the right thickness. Mine were always too thick or too thin. So you buy these colored bands and the tag actually comes with, it tells you like the yellow bands are, will roll your dough to one eighth inch thick. So as you're rolling it, you can see the bands are way off the cutting board now or the board. But as you roll it, the bands are gonna get closer. So when the bands touch the board, that's when it's about one eighth inch thick. Brilliant. There are other ways of doing it. And I've seen other products out there, but I just, that was always my biggest problem was um, getting it the right thickness. And then you sort of have to lean down and you know make sure the bands are touching and flip it every once in a while so it doesn't get stuck to the board. So it's getting closer. If they're too thin, they tend to get pretty misshapen. If they're too thin, that's pretty good. That's right around one eighth inch thick now. So now we're going to take a cookie cutter, a three inch cookie cutter, or you could use a glass. I prefer the cookie cutter because it's a much sharper edge. The glass will, won't give you as clean an edge, but it can certainly be done. I'll show you. And it's, it, you have to press a little bit harder. I'll show you the difference between the two. Start so, to find cookie cutters this time of year. What? Walmart didn't even have cookie cutters. Where do you, oh, where really? Do you where do you get those? Oh, you can get, you can probably get a cookie cutter at a, you know, well, Thrilla Tab's not in Bayshore anymore, but you can get one of them at Williams Sonoma or you might even be able to get one at Bed Bath and Beyond. Or Amazon. Yeah, that's true. Every, you can get everything at Amazon. So I'm just going to re roll it so we can get a few more out of here. How big did she say? Three inches. Re repeat the size. Oh, oh, three inch. Well, you could use any size. Actually, I think the recipe called for a smaller one in the cookbook, but I like a little bigger one. You'll see there. It's too hard to work with if you have a really small one. It just measured a can of tuna fish and it's three inches in diameter. So oh. here's another idea for cooking. That's a great idea. I hope it doesn't make it taste like tuna fish. You have to wash it pretty well. <laughs> this, this three inches. I usually use a glass. A little more. If it starts sticking to the board, put a little more flour down. And I'm just bending down to look and make sure it's the, the bands are touching. This is smaller. The board. OK, so like I said, you should get about six out of each quarter. We'll see if we can get one more out of here. Maybe not, but you can also take your scraps from each quarter and um, combine them. And sometimes at schools and things, I've even used the glasses as rolling pins first. The what? I've used the glasses as rolling pins and as cutting. Yeah, you could do that. Good idea. Okay. So here are my my six circles. I'm just going to wrap the scrap up. We might be able to reuse it with another scrap. Okay, now I'm going to put them on a cookie sheet. Oh, I need a cookie sheet. And I open, I was not like Rebecca, I did not make my own apricot filling. I have a can of cherry solo filling. I think the solo are the best. One thing I wouldn't do is um, I, I've i tried using jam in the past and they, it's very, it, there's a higher water content so it tends to be runny. Um, but 
you you can use um, chocolate chips. One thing I actually like better than chocolate chips is they harden when they cool. I actually like um, Nutella. I know that's not all really chocolate. It's hazelnut also, but Nutella works well. You could combine fruit filling and Nutella. Okay, so now we're gonna fill them and with about a teaspoon of the filling or whatever you decide to use. Just put that right in the middle. That's okay. Okay, what? Well, no, put it on the parchment, she said. Yes, I line my sheets with parchment paper, especially if you're using something sticky like um, like these fillings. They're, they'll burn if they get onto a hot cookie sheet or, or ooze out. You can buy parchment sheets. I've never done that. I just buy the roll. Okay, so here are my, my six homotation are all filled. Now the, the forming part. Watch. Oh, we need to. Everyone see? Okay, this is where you want to take a cup of water, dip your finger in, go around the edge of the circle, and then take two, two sides and pinch it like a, into a, make a corner or like a, pinch them together. So now you have like a horn shape almost. And then take the third side and fold it up and pinch each of those sides. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. I always like them close to me, so I just keep moving them around. That in there. So again, water around the edge, and that's, that will help them stick. But I, like I mentioned earlier, I still have some that open up on me. If you use a smaller cookie cutter, they won't, um, they're a little harder to form. So if this is new to you, I'd start with a bigger one. Because you'll see these still aren't, the, have you ever bought the ones at Benji's? They're huge. And um, they, I don't know what size cookie cutter they use. I know it's not Benji, but I think it might be Miller Bakery that makes those. Okay, so you just keep repeating with the water around the edge. And then there was a teaspoon right there. Pinch the pinch one corner, fold the other side up. And you've got the three sides, the triangle. We'll do some more of these as soon as these go in the oven. Now, do you ever mix flavors? In one home attachment? Uh-huh. No, but you could. I think, I think what would really be good would be a little, like some chocolate chips and apricot or chocolate chips and raspberry. I'm just going to get these in the oven. I like doing combinations. Yeah, what combinations do you do? I'm going to put this down for five minutes and I'm going to turn the pan just to be safe. What combinations do you do? Oh, I let everyone do their own favorite combinations. In oh, my that, would, that would be fun. I, yeah, yesterday, this is funny, when I was making some yesterday, I tried Nutella and apricot, Nutella and raspberry, but once they're baked, I couldn't tell which was which. So I have no idea. That'll be a surprise when we bite in. <laughs> and I really like lemon curd ones. Oh, that's a good idea. Lemon what? Lemon curd. That's a great idea. Do you make your own lemon curd? Oh, no. <laughs> so do you buy like the, what is that one? The um, Dickinson or? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. So here's my second quarter. Just keep rolling and this is the hardest part, especially if your dough is a little is on the chilled side. Ruth, did yours get warm enough to roll? I don't think she heard you. Oh, okay. Well, I know she didn't know she should take this out of the refrigerator. Yeah, I, I didn't take mine off, so that's why it's so hard. Yes, I didn't put that in the instructions, and I'm sorry about that, but I would take it out about 30 to 60 minutes before you want to start rolling. Let's see, I took mine out at 
one thirty. So it's just about two thirty now. So. I also recommend fluff. Fluff like marshmallow fluff? No, marshmallow fluff. Oh, that's a good idea. Wow. With some chocolate. Oh, that would be really mm. yummy. It's like eating s'mores. Yes, and you could even put <laughs> graham cracker crust in, you know, the graham cracker crumbs in there too. Oh, does that sound good? Okay, so got three out of that piece. So not my quarters weren't all exactly the same size. I also like doing about six at a time. You could do more. Um, it's just that I also worry about them getting dried out and then cracking as you're trying to form them. So that's why I like to keep, I've got the other two quarters covered in plastic wrap so that they don't get dried out while I'm forming the others. Do we have any Mund fans here, poppy seeds? Yes, those are my favorites. That's so funny. And I, I won't make poppy seed because I don't like it. <laughs> Some people feel that way about prune. Either you love prune or you hate them. I know my poor husband, he likes crappy seed. He probably likes prune too, but I, <laughs> he also likes Miracle Whip, but I won't even buy it because I like <laughs> Poor guy only gets what I like. Amy, I'm with you on all of those. <laughs> you can tell him he can do the shopping and then he can buy whatever he wants. That's right. Good, good idea. <laughs> But I do my, like room, uh, my grandmother always added crushed pineapple and chopped nuts to the prune. So Ooh, that's that what sounds I good. I that use the solo her. prune, chopped pineapple, uh, the crushed pineapple and nuts, and it's delicious. Add a little coconut too? No, I haven't. I didn't think of that. See, for me, you take out the prunes, you just <laughs> put in the pineapple and the nuts. Okay, now I'm just, I'm combining the scraps from the, well here, I, I can probably get one out, one more out of here. But if not, I could have combined the scraps of one quart, one of the balls or discs and with another one. But I can probably get one more. What is that rolling pin made out of? It's so cool. You know, I think it might be maple. This is, I bought it, well, uh, not, at one summer at the um, farmer's market at Cathedral Square, there was someone who was a woodworker was selling them and he sold me it because he said that he supplies all the rolling pins to one of the technical colleges, the culinary program. Oh. So I figured if they bought it, then, then it was good. So here, I'm just combining my scraps into one piece of plastic. Maybe we can reuse them. Okay, so next cookie sheet. Okay, so I'll put my circles on there. And I get a, I might get about two dozen um, momentation out of one of the solo cans of put of filling. I have to tell you, I bought one of the wilderness cans because I couldn't find raspberry in the solo. I could only find apricot and cherry. Oh, I found prune and poppy seed, but I wouldn't buy them. Um, but I did not like the raspberry um, filling from the Duncan Hines wilderness. It really wasn't very good. It was a funny consistency. Oops. Did it work okay though as baking it or did you just yeah. didn't like the flavor? Right, it worked fine. It, the solo one is much nicer. It's got, um, you know, it's got the seeds in it and it's brighter red and it's just much prettier. And the, uh, I think, and I had to drain some off the, mm. drain some liquid off. Now see how I sort of got this one messy. I'm gonna just clean it off a little because I don't know if it'll, it probably wouldn't stick. Okay. So now ready to form again. 10 to 16 minutes, it says to cook them for. Oh. Like this. Let's see this. I'm going to turn these before we go any. 
I like to rotate my pans just because I'm not sure. You said me. How many minutes do you usually bake them for, Amy? Um, I'll tell you, this oven, my top oven is usually 10 to 12 minutes. My bottom oven, even though I use a thermometer, it's a slower oven, I don't know why. Um, that one's a little bit longer. So I'd say t 10 to 12. And I, I like my cookies a little on the crispier side. So if you like them softer, you might want to take them out, but you'll see, I'll show you when I take them out. Um, when the when they just start to get brown on top the and it'll be the top like these ridges the corners yeah I'd, i've never baked them 16 minutes like joe nathan says I suppose if you had really big ones joe nathan yeah the author of the cookbook oh that's where i got this recipe or that's the recipe i use I'll just make this a cookie. Make well, she said, "Don't mess with it too much." You try it. You try it. And I would, I wouldn't do it quite assembly line style with your wetting the edge because it it dries out. So if you wet it, you if you put the water on all of them and then came back and closed them, I don't think they would stick as well. Thanks. And this one has a little bit of a sort of a crack in it. You can just take some water and try smoothing it out a little bit. That's from re-rolling the scraps. That's the layers. So that's why, you know, I try not to roll them is too much, but sometimes I just, you have to. Okay, so now these are ready to go in different oven. Okay, I'm just going to set the timer on my phone for that one. That oven is a little slower, so I put that one on for six minutes before I rotate it. And we'll just keep checking the top oven. And we'll take out another quarter. So those of you who are doing it, how are they coming along? Beautiful. Oh, good. No, no, because look, it's all flat. Oh, but I bet it tastes good. It's sort of like broken cookies. They still taste good. <laughs> what what crap? Broken cookie. I'll try the next batch. Okay. Well, that one will be good. I find that it takes a little bit of time. Oh yeah, these take a lot of practice. And next time maybe uh, cut the flour down because I think sometimes if they're dry, they tend to crack a little bit more. We had the wrong measure. Yeah, I, I, that's, but you know, the, oops. So if your dough gets a hole in it like mine just did, just patch it up. Okay, so that's about one eighth inch. Checking these. Make these. Oh, yep, yeah, I knew it. 
Okay, I'm gonna give them another minute. See how they're just starting to get a little uh, brown on the top. So let's just put them in another minute or so. Maybe give them maybe one and a half minutes. We'll see how, see if the tops get a little more brown then. Amy, do you think it's important to only put six on a cookie sheet at once or can you put on more? No, you could do more. There's plenty of room there. Um, it's just that because the quarters make about six and I don't like them to sit out and, you know, dry. Right. But yeah, you could definitely do more as long as they're not too close together. But that the, the first cookie sheet I put in is a smaller cookie sheet than the second one. Mm -hmm. I can probably get one more out of this one. Nope, we still have one more quarter left. Okay, let's check this. Okay, I think I'm still gonna put them in another minute. I think they'll just be a little soft. this time to make, finish this piece of dough off. Okay, so there's about six. And now I'm going to take this scrap and combine it with the other scrap. And we'll get a few more home and fashion out of the scrap. Okay, now these, since, I, uh, since my cookie sheets are being used, well, um, I'm gonna just form them right on the cutting board here. tell they're starting to get browner on the bottom so there's the bottom oh okay so now I'm going to let these cool for two minutes okay. what was most amazing to me was that you were able to lift that up and that the insides didn't just come out in your hand <laughs> oh you know, because that pie, that filling is um, thicker than jelly. So it won't, it, that's one advantage of it. Okay, now my timer for the bottom one just went off. So I'm gonna turn these around. And these are moving along as quickly as the top ones. So I'm gonna give them about six minutes more. Oh, I give them six minutes the first time. So now that'll be about 12. So I'm just gonna let these cool for about two minutes, take them off the cookie sheet and then let them cool on a cooling rack. Amy, have you ever tried putting two racks worth in one oven? Sure, you, I, I don't do it because I don't have, I mean, I because I have the two ovens, but you could do that. But I, what I would do then is rotate, switch, trade them out midway so that the one that was on the top rack is then on the bottom rack just because it's the i think the top rack is hotter right that makes good sense yeah so the top rack the so then they would cook more evenly i probably overfilled some of these 
but they don't seem to be coming out. So while we're waiting for this pan to cool, we can just finish forming these. The other thing I've done uh, when I was sort of short on time, I cut out all my circles and wrapped them in um, plastic wrap and then baked them another day. So you could, but you do have to let them soften a little bit because if you try to form them when they're pretty cold, they will crack. Mm. Okay, so that means this cookie sheet is cool enough to take off. Okay, just wanted to finish forming that one. Okay, so these are hot still. Okay, so I'm just going to take them off. And then I'll cool completely here. Now you saw that I had powdered sugar on one batch. That was the batch that was all done. Don't powder sugar them until they're um, totally cool or the powdered sugar will just sort of melt in. So now you can let those cool and we'll finish forming these. And do they need powdered sugar? No, I just think they look pretty and it also covers up a multitude of sins. So if you have some that you don't think are perfect, which mine are never perfect, but you know, it, it, especially the ones that, um, you know, get a little misshapen. And I can already tell from the forming of these that some of them are get, might not look like some of the others. So that's, so no, you don't have to put powdered sugar in. Or you could do a, say you're giving them as a gift or serving them. I would just put the powdered sugar on right before. Okay, so here's another batch ready to go in. Now I'm gonna do something that you're not supposed to do, but it, I don't think it'll matter for this. I'm gonna put them on a warm cookie sheet because if you did that and they sat there for a while before you put them in the oven, they'd start to cook from the bottoms woods. But I'm gonna put, just put these six on and then put them right in the oven and. So it's not like they're going to be on a hot cookie sheet. Whoops. Very long. Okay. okay. So five minutes for that one. Let's check the bottom oh, one. That's nice, Ruth. Okay, we got a couple more, but I want to see Ruth's. Oh, they're beautiful. They're perfect. I love them. Very nice. Oh, nice. They're beautiful. Okay. That apple cut, Ruth? We definitely have a few minutes left on the ones in the bottom of it. Okay, so for my last, this is my last uh, quarter of dough. Except now I have the dough that we made earlier. Oops. So is anyone else making them besides Ruth? I didn't take my dough out earlier, so it was hard as a rock. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry about that. I should have put that on the instructions. Do you have a radiator or something you could put it on? <laughs> In the ceiling. Oh. But it'll cool and then I'll watch. I'm learning a lot watching. Oh, okay. You know, I did the Eclair one this summer. Did anyone else do that with yes. Nicole? Yes. Yes. I, and I made the mistake of trying to make them while she was making them. Well, I was like, I love, I was like Lucy in that Lucy episode in the chocolate factory. <laughs> exactly. I could not, I couldn't keep up with Nicole and right. I made the biggest mess you've ever seen. That's the nice reason, um, Susan, that you're recording it so we can look exactly. at it again. Yes, yeah, that's definitely my recommendation that um, 
watch it first. Although Ruth, you, you did a great job by doing it while we were zooming. There are certain things that you can do while during our Sunday mornings that we do with Rachel, but there are a lot of things, especially when it comes to baking, that is just so much easier that to follow afterwards. And okay, here's the ones in the bottom of it. I'm gonna give them a couple more minutes. Oh, they, could, they could they could use a little more browning on top. They're so perfect, Amy. I'm so jealous. How no, big Ruth, you look perfect, Ruth? How big is your cookie cutter again? Three inches. Three inches. So that's what we have, three inches. So hmm. No, I, yours looked great. I saw them. I came around to the iPad and took a peek. <laughs> and with Rebecca's homemade apricot filling, I'm really impressed. I bet they're delicious. That's with, probably with, with brandy. With a little brandy. Oh, is that a good oh. idea? Yum. Yeah. Wow. I wonder if you could add that to the solo filling. Probably yes. Probably. That's a good idea. So did How you much brandy do you put in, ladies? Hi. Rebecca. Oh, she's got headphones on. Can you go ask her, Jonathan? Probably you don't want to put, in, put in the one pound of apricots. Dried apricots? Yeah. Oh yum. So you cooked them down for a while in some water and brandy? He added water, cooked them down. And how much did she put in, Jonathan? She said a splash. She said a splash. Can, you, like a splash. can you look how much a splash is? <laughs> I don't think <laughs> I have that. Splash. <laughs> he said yeah, a splash. I, here it is. Armenian brandy. Hey. That's a great idea. Oh, I bet that'll be delicious. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to trying the, um, the uh, oh, the Nutella. I haven't yeah. done that before, but it sounds great. Yeah, I thought Nutella was good. Um, if you're really ambitious, you can you can dip the already made ones, like dip a corner in the cho in chocolate or drizzle chocolate. Mm -hmm. Okay, now here I put all my scraps together. That. <laughs> I'll, I'll roll these out. I am no good at this. So definition, a splash <laughs> is a dash. But if you need an exact measurement, it would be a quarter of a teaspoon to a half a teaspoon, according to the bartender's definition. Oh. <laughs> that is good to know. That's so funny. I didn't know that there was a definition for a splash. There you go. That is a splash. Did Rebecca actually know that? No, she just <laughs> splashed. <laughs> does know. No, she probably does know, but she doesn't tell me. She just uh, do the poppy. Did you do this? I did so. Oh, then do the Africa. She likes Africa. Oh, Jonathan's doing a much better job of pinching than me. Much better. I, okay, these lower ones I think are done right now. So there they are. And I will put it all down to the pool for a couple minutes. So I think I lost time on my top one. We'll know by the way they look. Okay, so these are the second tray is cooling. So now these will definitely get more than six on a cookie sheet because I've already got oops, I think there's eight. I'll probably have about nine. And Brett's just waiting for me to finish so he can eat the scraps the rest right. of the dough, which I know you're not supposed to. <laughs> she doesn't waste much. There's not much to waste scraps <laughs> remaining. When I give him the bowl to lick, he says, oh boy, gee, thanks. Maybe he doesn't waste a spoonful. So in years, when <laughs> I actually have made it to the grocery store, which is obviously not this year or last year. Um, oh, thanks. <laughs> <you go. laughs> he eats it raw? 
<laughs> yes, loves it. Okay. When I make my own, when I would make my home in Tush and my dough has. Look at this uh, one Jonathan made. My dough usually has orange peel in it. Oh, it's beautiful. And orange juice and a little bit of amaretto. Oh, yum. You all have such fancy recipes. Okay, I think I'm going to put things on for five more minutes. And as soon as these come off the, oh, as soon as that other cookie sheet is cool, you can take them off. Okay, I think I'm going to need to either open another can of filling or do the Nutella thing. I could bring you some over, Amy. I got apricot. <laughs> I bet you do. I have a jar. It's actually not Nutella, but it's something similar. Oh. Now, of course, the timer goes off when I have raspberry filling all over me. Okay. If you are using chocolate chips, we highly recommend you use the minis and not oh. the regular size. Oh, that's a good point. They Do they melt faster? Is that it? They do. They do? Yeah. yeah. More thoroughly. They kind of fuse together then. Okay. So, by the way, the peanut butter chips also work well, the caramel one, butterscotch. Could I get, has anyone, I have a bag of heat chips. I wonder if I could mix those with something. The mint chips, any of the chips. Heath, I have Heath bar chips, or not Heath, chocolate chips. Heath There's no chocolate on them, but I could mix that with chocolate, I bet. That of would course. Be good. Delicious. Yeah. I am sure Heath chips would taste good. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, what's, nothing's wrong with those. Are you coming, Rebecca? Thank God. <laughs> My little baker is coming. He's really good at all kinds of baking. Okay, now I'm going to switch over to Nutella. Not well. <laughs> You're warm this, this is a different version of Nutella. I don't, we got it as a gift. Let's go to the over there. So we're going to, I'm going to just say on it, Amy. You can't read it. It's Nocio Lata. It's, it's written in another language. It's like a, a, a good cream. Did you hear that? You guys, no. did you hear what she did just now? The size of our How is it taste? illustrious bacon. It still tastes good, she says. She said that one of ours looked like bunny ears. <laughs> <laughs> but it tasted good, so that's what's important. It's a teaspoon. Well, it looks it's beautiful, good. Amy. It does. Watch her do it. She does like and the, the the Nutella doesn't come off the spoon as easy as easily as the fruit fillings. But what I I'm going to have to go, but I just wanted to thank you, say thank you to Amy, and also encourage everybody to sign up and be part of our baking crew for this. Thanks again. Bye-bye. Bye, Audrey. What I've done is um, I should have mixed the cherry and the uh, chocolate. That would have been good. This is the second time. Would you like the recipe using oil instead of butter? Oh, is that Naomi? Oh, yes, it's oh, me. I've I been watching you, Amy. Amy, and can tell everybody that yours are not only artistically perfect, but are they you? are delicious to taste. They are. It's with, a treat. But if you'll butter. remember several years ago, Bobby Cohn and I, with a group of women of Emmanuel, Bake several hundred homentaschen in our kitchen at Emmanuel to sell at the um, the fair. But we used the recipe because of our kosher kitchen and for dealing with kashrath. We used the oil recipe. Mm -hmm. And if you're interested, I'd be very happy to read off those ingredients. And if not. Make them with butter, as Amy does. They are delicious. 
Right. You can use the only, is that the recipe? Because I have one with oil that I think I got from Temple with That's four the way. eggs and one with and four, a half cup of sugar. Four eggs, a cup of sugar, four teaspoons of baking powder, a half a cup of oil, two teaspoons of vanilla, and four cups of flour plus two tablespoons. That's a big recipe. Wow, that makes a lot. Yeah. Yes, it does make a lot. We were and making they're delicious. They and would you be willing to email that to me so I can put it on the website? Sure. Thank you. You're perfect. How does yours not do it? Give those another minute. Now the recipe I gave you from uh, Joan yes. Nathan's cookbook, you can use margarine. So yeah. that would be the same as oil too, wouldn't it? Yeah. Okay. We have to go. We have to go. Bye. Okay, bye. 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 If you'll remember, we got our fillings via Dennis, who was with Benji's, and he would get us the ten number ten cans from the bakery supply company. Wow. And so that we had apricot as well as uh, cherry, I think, and maybe prune. I can't remember. This was several years ago. We're and trying. then they, they said no more apricot, which was a wonderful filling. Oh, that's my favorite. Here's our cherry. And then here's the one Rebecca made, the apricot. It's like in here. But it wasn't hard, right? But Amy's are a work of art. Each and every one is perfect. The poppy seed from the can. Wow. Okay. So this tray will have to cool for two minutes with perfect timing because we're almost ready to put them on the other tray. Naomi, hey, are you still on? Yes, I'm here. Do you have a recipe for a, a mon or poppy seed coffee cake? No. Okay. Like when you go to Florida, you can get it in the delis. It's so good. Oh, that's not called a coffee cake. And I do have that poppy seed recipe, but it's not called a coffee cake. And I can't remember what it's it is. It's like called. man. That's the Yiddish name, right? Man. Or something. Mon is the word for a poppy seed, but that's not how it's listed as the cake. Okay. Um, it's like a coffee cake. I like have it, rainbow. and it came from... Um, <clears throat> okay. Names escape me. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you probably use the same <clears throat> filling from the can, I would imagine. It's a Hungarian recipe. Mm -hmm. Is it in one of your cookbooks, Naomi? I beg your pardon? Is it in one of your cookbooks? No, it is not because it was oh. not the original recipe and it came from oh. the sister of the one who did our Torah covers. Oh. The kolache roll? No. Oh, no. please. No, <laughs> if like I go to look for it now, the program will be over. So <laughs> I'll... <laughs> well, Naomi, if you find it, let me know some uh -huh. other time. Who's asking? Ruth. Who? Ruth Treesman. Oh, Ruth. Yes. Okay, Ruth. I'm writing it down. Okay. Thank you, Naomi. You're welcome. Well, we're gonna go are coming out perfect like Amy's. Just so yeah. You know. Ruth. Yeah. Didn't you work with us on the uh, oil recipe? I did. No, I, I, I didn't. Amy, did you? I did. I came no. to the kitchen. We did it at the synagogue in the kitchen, right? Yeah, right. But that yeah, was the that. one with the uh, with the oil. Oh. It's a good recipe. I like that one. I think you know, just whatever you prefer. If you prefer I like Amy's better. <laughs> I also like mine with cream cheese. Now, yes. Naomi, let me ask you: with your cream cheese, does that have just butter and flour with it? Because that's yeah, what cream, cream cheese, cream. butter, and flour. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, now, Susan, in answer to your question about how many you can put on a cookie sheet, the ones that are in the oven now have, there's nine on that one. So you can definitely do more than, um, you know, more than six. 
I just finished off the recipe. And then when they're all cool, here's some that were, I think I made yesterday. And then when they're all cool, you can take a little powdered sugar. You can either use a sifter or use this little wand thing and just sprinkle a little powdered sugar on it. It's best to do that before serving, otherwise it gets absorbed into the dough. <clears throat> um, yeah, I'll, you know, here I'll show you what I did. I did these a couple hours ago. So, and they still, they still do have it, but I don't know how long it'll last. They're beautiful. So that's, that is all my, I'm out of dough, except for what we just made earlier. Beautiful, Amy. Thank yes. you so much. Oh, yes, thank any you. Any questions at this point? Does anyone have any questions about how to sign up to be a baker or a sponsor for our home in Tashathan? Okay, then if there are no more questions, I thank everyone. I wish everyone a wonderful day. Thank you so much, Amy. We are so grateful. Oh. This. Thank oh, you. Too. I hope it was helpful. Oh, it yes, was very. Helpful. Thank you to you everyone. The artist. Yes, you all had such good ideas. I know I want to try all your filling. And we wish everyone a great day. And Thank we will you. see all of you soon. There are many more events for forum. Um, we will be having a. Um, for those of you who are baking, there'll be a time to drop off things before our drive-through. Um, and as the drive-through was mentioned, our drive-through no, no. will be um, on Wednesday, February 24th. Um, it, it is actually being called a drive-through car novel. Car novel. Um, so there'll be activities to do in your car. You will not be leaving your car, but there'll be activities to do from your car. Um, and we look forward to seeing you at that event from 4.30 to 6.30. Do and you have we to sign up, Susan? Uh, you, there will be a sign up for that, yes. And then from there, we hope you will drop by Luminati's. But beforehand, before going to Luminati's, we hope that you will place an order at Luminati's with the special code so that you can support lifelong learning in a second way um, with our fundraiser there and that you will hopefully buy enough food at Luminati so that you can have dinner both Wednesday night and enough leftover or a second meal for Luminati's for Thursday night so that you can enjoy the Purim Spiel and have dinner while you're watching the Purim Spiel. Which yeah, I was curious. And then on Friday at noon or 12.30, let me just double check that one. There will be a lunch and learn perform as well. Let me just get that time for you. Uh, Friday the 26th at 12 yeah. o'clock. Yeah. So there'll be lots of fun things going on for Porm. So yeah, I'm just curious about that. Everyone. Oh, and at 7 o'clock the Sunday before Porm, 7 o'clock on the 21st will be a Cantors and Friends concert. So lots and lots of stuff. Yes, Jimmy Joe. Yeah. Just curious. Will there be a posting with the packaging uh, information for these commentation when we deliver them? Yes. When you sign up to be a sponsor, there will all the sponsors will be. I'm sorry to be a baker. There will be another letter coming to all the bakers afterwards about how to pack up your food and when to drop it off and all those other things um, and the links to how to make Mishloch my note if you want to do that and um, all that jazz. Yes. Wait, we're already signed up. So we'll just wait yes, for that information to come. Perfect. Yes. It will come out soon. Okay. Great. Thank you so very much. And I'm so enjoying everyone's artwork and things that I'm getting to see in different people's homes at this moment. And uh, how's puppy? Puppy's good. Good. Puppy's excellent. good. Excellent, excellent. Okay. So, thank you everyone for joining us. And um, I'm actually getting a phone call at this exact moment. So I'm going to sign us all off. Bye everyone.
Bye. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Thank you, Bye. Amy.